Hey guys, on this episode of Swapology, we're going to be talking about all of the new and reconditioned front suspension components we're going to be installing on our Nissan Frontier. We're shifting gears and getting back to our Frontier build. And what we did in the previous episode of Swapology about the Frontier was tearing apart all of the factory Armada front suspension components we pulled off of our Armada donor vehicle. Now, if you remember correctly, that truck was pretty rusty. All of the front end components we pulled off were very rusty. And we were going through the process of pressing out ball joints, cutting out factory bushings, and getting the arms ready to be blasted and powder coated. Then towards the end of that video, we decided, you know what, let's go take a look at what it costs to just buy already reconditioned or new replacement factory components for some of these arms that were really rusty. And what we found out was that buying a complete arm wasn't a whole heck of a lot more money than just buying the bushings and ball joints that we were planning on purchasing in the first place. So instead of actually reconditioning those arms, we abandoned that idea and purchased some reconditioned factory or replacement factory components. Now what we did end up keeping was our front spindles. That's the part that the control arms bolt to, your wheel bearing bolts to. So what I have here are our used front spindles but after they've been reconditioned. So what we did was we had them media blasted and powder coated in silver. They came out really nice. It's hard to believe it's the same part that we had originally when it was all nasty and rusty, but sure enough, these are the same parts. And this is kind of one of the foundational pieces for the front end of our build of our Frontier with the Armada front suspension. Now, some of the new replacement parts we purchased were front lower control arms. So this is a front lower right hand side control arm and front lower left hand side control arm. And these are just factory replacement parts. So they're not Nissan parts, they're aftermarket. And what's interesting is we bought both arms from the same manufacturer. I always try to match left and right from the same manufacturer. But interestingly, the left hand side arm, I believe this is the left, this one has an R stamped in it for right. So the left arm has a bump stop on it. The, the right arm does not. And the left arm came with a ball joint that has a grease fitting on it for greasing the ball joint, but the right arm does not. So two arms from the same manufacturer for the same year vehicle, slightly different configuration. And that's kind of what you get when you purchase aftermarket parts for a vehicle rather than factory parts. If these were Nissan parts, they would be exactly the same left and right other than being a mirror image of each other for ones for the right hand side and ones for the left hand side. But other than that, we purchased these parts and then for the upper control arms on the front, we did not buy factory replacement arms. We bought aftermarket front arms, and they're actually a forged steel arm. And the way the arm is designed is that it has a front upper ball joint that can actually be configured to multiple positions in the arm. If you look how the ball joint has this shoulder in it with this large nut on top, again, it's a greasable joint. And the way this shoulder is in the arm, you can basically install this ball joint in multiple positions on the arm to change both camber and caster. And by having that adjustment, um, when we lower our truck, because we're not lifting it, but we're lowering it substantially, it'll give us some adjustment for camber and caster in the front end. And then what we'll do is essentially if these front arms don't give us enough adjustment for how low we're gonna make this truck. There are companies that make aftermarket bushings for the lower control arms that the sleeve is removable and the hole is actually drilled offset in the sleeve. So depending how you rotate that sleeve will push the bottom of the front, uh, the inside of the bottom control arm out or in, up or down, or if you set one forward and one back, you can actually change the angle of the arm slightly, and all of those things will allow you to adjust camber and caster even further. So rather than just spend money on those parts right off the bat, we're not certain if we'll need them with how low this truck will be, we're gonna start off with the adjustability of the front control arms first, and if it's not enough, then we'll tackle some more adjustment in the lower control arms. Another nice feature of these front upper control arms is the urethane bushings they come with. That'll help make the front end more stable. Um, we do have some urethane bushing options for the lower control arms as well if we feel we need to go there. But again, we're gonna try it all first with the factory replacement stuff and then see where we need to go from there because this is a little bit of uncharted territory with a lowered sport truck type build rather than a lifted off-road truck type build. Now, the Armada that we got our donor parts from was a 2004 model, which was the first year for the Armada in the States. And one of the big complaints about the Armada early on, 
and the Titan for that matter, was insufficient front brakes. And Nissan actually revised the front brake package on those vehicles in 2008. So 2008 and newer Titans and Armadas have bigger front brakes than the older ones. So we didn't want to run the same style front brake that came on our 2004. If we're going to run factory brakes, we want the best factory brakes that were offered. So what we ended up doing was purchasing 2008 and newer front calipers and rotors to put on our older spindles. And you would think, oh, that's easy, easy enough upgrade. But unfortunately it isn't because a little bit more changed than just the rotors and calipers. Um, what Nissan did, and I'll show you here, we purchased new replacement front wheel bearings for the front end of the truck. Now these are Armada parts from a 2008 and newer Armada. You need to actually match your front hub and wheel bearing assembly with the year of brakes that you're running. If you look on the front uh, hub assembly here, there's shoulders that are machined and normally on a 2004 to 2007 Armada, it's all one diameter here, the smaller diameter. In 2008, they added this second step. So what happens is this larger step is where your brake rotor centers and this smaller step is where your wheel centers. So if you put a 2008 and newer brake rotor that has a cutout for this large diameter on a 2007 and older front hub assembly, there would be a gap between the inside of the rotor and the hub and the rotor itself wouldn't center properly. So I can show you, we have the 2008 and newer rotor here, and this rotor centers on this larger uh, surface in here. Now, if there was a gap, the way that there's some space between the wheel studs and the rotor, the rotor could actually move off center slightly. And when you bolt your wheel down, you can clamp the rotor in a slightly off center position because gravity is going to make it fall down to the lowest position while you're putting your, before you put your wheel on. And then when you drive at highway speeds, your rotor is off center and you'll actually get a shimmy in your steering wheel, just like an out of balance wheel and tire, but it's actually your rotor is not centered properly. So by putting the newer 2008 and up wheel bearing on our truck, and it allows our 2008 and newer brake package to center properly and run true rather than running out of balance. Now, there are some aftermarket big brake kits available for Titans and Armadas, but unfortunately they're pretty pricey what is out there. And honestly, our Frontier is gonna be a heck of a lot lighter than our Titan or Armada would have been from the factory. So we're gonna try out running a nice cross-drilled and slotted rotor and a performance pad with factory Armada 2008 and newer brakes on our Frontier at first. And we'll see how well it does. It's a good sized rotor and the truck should be easily 1,000 to 1,500 pounds lighter than a Titan, if not even more. And then the only other component we got from the front end is also brand new, well, new remanufactured front brake calipers. So this is a factory 2008 and up Armada front brake caliper. It's again, it's slightly larger than the older Armada calipers. These are actually from a company called Power Stop, and so are the rotors. It's really nice. They make a package that's rotors, calipers, pads, the pad hardware, everything you can buy in one kit. It's one-stop shopping and it's everything you need. So we just bought the front and rear kit complete for an Armada. We're getting the, the matching cross-drilled and slotted rear rotors, matching powder-coated red calipers, and it'll be a nice upgrade over factory brakes, definitely much bigger than factory frontier brakes, and uh, a nice upgrade even with a better pad compound and the rotors than the factory Armada brakes. So this will be the front brake package that we run on the truck, the front spindles, the front control arms. Um, the only other component that we have new for the front end is actually new factory replacement, well, their aftermarket replacement, front sway bar end links. Excuse the plastic noise. But these are just replacement front sway bar end links. They're actually a heavy duty model. They're a little stiffer than the factory end links and they do have greasable ball joints so you can grease the end links. Um, unlike most guys building 4x4 off-road trucks, we're running sway bars. We're actually going to run the Armada sway bars on our Frontier as well. So the, the point of this whole package, other than getting fresh new parts on, the, on an older vehicle, which is always nice, is to increase the track width. The factory track running width of an Armada is approximately 6 inches wider than the track width of a Frontier. So the way they accomplished this with the frames being the same width is that the control arms are longer. So that's why we're going through this whole exercise of putting Armada control arms on a Frontier. It's going to widen the track width of the front end of the truck. And then we're also installing the Armada independent rear suspension subframe into our Frontier as well to get independent suspension and to have a matching track width in rear. 
So all of these control arms, spindles, wheel bearings, brakes, all of this is going to get bolted onto our Project Frontier uh, in the coming weeks. Um, we're excited to put up that video of the installation of all these parts. We'll be able to pull off the factory Frontier parts and give you a little comparison side by side of the length of the factory Frontier arms compared to these Armada arms. We'll get some front and rear photos of the right from the front of the truck, see where the wheels were at before and after the swap. Unfortunately, we have to switch to Titan and Armada style wheels as well, because even though all the trucks are six lug, the Armadas and the Titans are six on five and a half inches, just like a Chevy truck, but the Frontiers and Xterras are six lug on four and a half inches, so it's a smaller circle. So unfortunately, they don't, uh, we can't use the Frontier wheels, but we want to run aftermarket wheels anyway, so we can get a much bigger wheel and tire package on, not diameter wise, but width probably a 20 by 10 or a 20 by 12 wheel with like a 305 or a 335 section with tire on it. Something from like a sport SUV. Uh, there's a lot of options out there, but we'll get into that more in a later episode as well. But I hope you enjoyed taking a look at the front suspension components that we're going to be installing on our truck. Again, please like, subscribe, follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. We're doing our best to bring more and more content to you guys to give you an inside look at some of the vehicles that we build here at LOJ Conversions. This is one of the most exciting builds that I've been able to be a part of. Building a sport truck like this has been a dream of mine for years. It's something I've built over and over in my head and now to finally get to do it is really exciting. So I'm excited. I hope you guys are excited that you get to come along for the ride. Lots of really cool, unique stuff is gonna be done with this truck. And I really hope you're excited. Share with your friends, tell them all about it. And we will talk to you soon. Thanks.